Hello and welcome to Claret and Blue and our Inside Bodymore show ahead of Bournemouth this Sunday. I'm your host, Dan Rowlandson, joined by John Townley to look ahead to that Bournemouth game. We'll also touch on Leggy Warsaw a little bit as well, no doubt. Uh, John, how are you? You look cosy in your little, your little hoodie there. I'm freezing, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine though, thank you. Uh, that was quite something <laughs> on and off the pitch. Mm. So, um, yeah, we'll get into that. But yeah, my, my working day on Friday has been kind of morning to evening uh, police reports and um, yeah. trying to get information and, and whatnot. Um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of fans have kind of moved on from the game pretty quickly um, and only thought about what happened before it. Obviously, a very good win for Villa and we come within inches of getting to the round of 16. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm I'm doing well, thank you. We just recorded ten minutes or so of chat about the off the pitch stuff last night. If you don't want to hear all that again and you want to skip forward to the football talk, you can go to this time code on the screen to kind of fast forward all that and um and skip to the football chat. So if you go to this time code, well uh, we'll we'll start talking about the on pitch matters instead. Off the pitch, what did you make for that last night? You were there, you were kind of boots on the ground filming stuff around the, the away end. I think you I've got a couple of clips I can throw in. You said to me before we started, you saw a policeman set on fire with a, uh, who got hit by a flare. Disgusting. Vile. Um, kind of acts of... Uh, it's just despicable, really. Like, Firstly, it's worth saying that, you know, I mean, it's, it's hard to get balanced with this, of course it is, but for the, I don't know how many thousands there were, kind of locked into that um, car park, penned in, I think there was probably about 3,000 or so, two to 3,000, around 200 were just... Um, fans going to is going to like corporate so i don't know players families stuff like that and um, yeah, yeah. people who i'm sure probably didn't travel to birmingham with the intention of doing any harm um to put to the public <laughs> but the ones who did yeah completely despicable and um it's just i mean i obviously the police expected trouble or the potential for there to be trouble but uh, yeah to see some of the stuff that happened and Frankly, it was quite um, it's quite remarkable that no one were was you know significantly injured. Obviously, four um, yeah. were four people anyway. Four officers were injured. One was hospitalised with with burn injuries, as you say, because he was hit by a flare and basically set alight. That could have been a whole lot worse. Um, you know, tragic. So, yeah, two police dogs, two horses as well were also injured. So it could have been a whole lot worse considering the amount of Legia fans that arrived and the amount that, as I say, were clearly intent on not there for football some of them were um and they themselves were really frustrated and um furious that villa didn't allow them into the game because they were going to be you know seated in a different part of the stadium that wasn't the away end uh, but it's so hard to you know pick out the certain few that weren't going to cause trouble and stuff you have to yeah. just take it as oh, if I'm with the same um, brush don't you really because you can't be sure yeah, who's good and who's exactly. bad Exactly, and there's no excuse. Like it, it, it's just a real shame because when I went to Warsaw, for example, I didn't have a bad word to say. You know, yeah. on the pitch, Legia as a team, by the way, I think are very good. Um, it's a shame because they probably won't get the credit they deserve. I think they were excellent in the first game and in this uh, game at Villa Park, they didn't have any support. Um, and again, I think they were very good for, for a team that are in the Polish league, which must be like the twentieth best division in Europe, I think. Um, fair play, but yeah, off the pitch, absolutely disgraceful. But yeah, in Warsaw, there was no no trouble maybe that was because villa fans were impeccably behaved they appear to be kind of provoked sometimes i think by the police and how they were treated um that's to be expected i suppose when you go away thursday night was nothing short of a disgrace on their behalf and yeah if anything it's just good to see that everyone was okay um and um yeah probably a word out to the police as well for their yeah really, they kept everyone safe villa fans safe villa fans were cooperating as well cooperative as well um, the public were safe because of the police as well, their bravery that they showed. Um, I know that we ran a story, the news team from Birmingham Mail went along to um, some local residents early this morning. I think a few um, or quite a lot of dam quite a lot of damage has been done there as well. And you know, where'd you go with that? So I think it's what, 46 people in custody at the moment at the time of doing this podcast. So yeah, yeah, disgusting scenes, but yeah, at least no one was you know badly hurt considering the um the events. Yeah, we said that on the post match show last night that was done, you know, midnight ish and obviously still a lot up in the air, then you're still on the night of the game and you you're hoping that you don't wake up to a news story of somebody yeah. being badly beaten up or, or worse, killed or something like that. So to kind of get through yeah. this twenty four hours it's Friday evening as we record this by the way, to get through these twenty four hours of you know, everyone's fine as far as we're aware. There's forty six odd Polish fans in custody. So one of them had a weapon. I think it was a knife as well, which yeah, again shows... Was, like, yeah. what, what, Who's uh, coming to a football with a knife? It's a different level, isn't it? These ultras, these 
you know, hooligans, whatever you want to call it. Just watch the football. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's, like, if I was a Legia fan who was actually kind of wanted to be there and support my team, if I was, you know, you should have friends of the players and family of the players and things like that, to be associated with these scumbags, it's just it's just horrible. I, I would hate to have that Villa had a section of supporters like that that are going off to Arsenal away carrying knives and causing trouble and stuff. It's just disgusting. It's football supposed to be something that we do as a as a hobby and for entertainment and whatever else. These people just go and just for a scrap and to cause trouble. I just, I, just, I just can't wrap my head around it. I just don't get it at all. I received like loads of emails, calls, texts, you name it, off Polish journalists, and you know I got back to as many as I could kind of talking about Villa um, but then one of kind of the biggest talking points from their point was oh and this is not from journalists but from fan blogs and supporters not ranting at me but ranting about oh why are Villa and by the way it wasn't Villa who reduced the capacity why is the capacity reduced and um, this is disgraceful it's kind of um, stereotyping Polish people you know that sort of thing because they're expecting children it makes you think what on earth were they even if they must have been fully aware that there was going to be that there was going to be trouble, the lack of cooperation from Legia Warsaw in a general context as well. I think it was only until the morning of the game that Villa or UEFA or whoever were um, kind of made aware of what was going to be happening. And yeah, Chris Hex put out some quotes as well in the club statement on um, Friday, basically saying that he's going to have to or Villa are going to have to have um, kind of stern words with UEFA because this simply can't happen again. UEFA, sorry, uh, Legia have a track record for it and it, it's yeah. gone too far now because police officers are, you know, I don't want to kind of go over the, over the line and say they're putting their lives on the, putting their lives at risk. But when you're getting well, flares nice thrown at you, yeah, exactly. yeah, nice in the stadium, you are running that risk and when is it going to stop? When when are Legia going to, um, or other clubs, because it's not just Legia, when are they going to um, kind of draw the line and say this can't happen again? Because it's just yeah, somebody have to line. die before we die, take that, action. That, that is what it feels like, and that yeah. might sound um, crazy, but that is the case. The leg you play AZ up, I don't know, in the final game, and, and AZ could still finish second in the group, and I think most people would be back in AZ. I think Legia will also be welcome at Villa Park again, and they can piss off as far as I'm concerned. On the pitch then, let's talk about more positive things. Villa won last night at Villa Park again, something that we seem to do every time we, we turn up there. What, what did you make of the game overall? To be perfectly honest with you, I struggled to um, kind of take it all in because of different things that were going on. And I was obviously occupied kind of working during the game on what was going on outside. But from what I could see, again, I will credit Legia. I think they were very good. They were a very, very well-organised team. I, I think they would give almost any team, most teams in the Premier League, apart from obviously the top teams, um, a real run for the money as well. I think they've got some very talented players. Mucci looks like a top player. <laughs> I think he's probably due a move in the summer. Yeah, a game that I expected Villa to win in all honesty, and I didn't mm. rate the players particularly highly in terms of giving them like eights or nines. Um, it was kind of the performance that I expected. I don't think there was any kind of standout performances. DRB played well. Um, yeah. Again, I don't want to kind of be negative at all, but I think those players should step up to the mark when we're playing a team of Legia's quality in all due respect. Kamara obviously makes a very poor error. Mm. That's something that I think maybe in a Premier League game, that probably gets a lot more focus. And I do think at the start of this season, I think he's been very good in some games, but in other games, when he does make those mistakes, they do go punished. Yeah. Um, and that will cost Villa, so he does need to kind of... I don't know what it is. I think sometimes it's a bit too lax, maybe a bit too um, comfortable, maybe. Uh, but they're obviously a, a very poor error, and it's just a shame that we couldn't get that that third goal. We were one up inside four minutes. I thought, well, at that point, come on, we can just win the game by two goals. I thought goals, because of the no-away no fans as well, I thought oh, it's time to capitalise now on there being no yeah. kind of walk atmosphere. Let's get two, three up at half-time and then make changes. And obviously that's not yeah. the way it panned out. And to win and have all the other stuff happening as well, I think it was yeah. a bit of relief at the end as much as anything. So like, right, we've won. Happy days. Let's all get out of the stadium. Everyone stay safe and we move on to the next game is kind of how yeah. I, I felt about it, I think. Yeah. And let's get on to that next game. Let's talk about Bournemouth. And um, we'll go straight into the presser. As always, for people who maybe have not seen the show, when it's been a European night, it wasn't really a proper press conference. Um, the Premier League productions team go to to Villa Park and speak to an Emery for broadcast purposes, but no um, kind of external journalists there like, John, you, you, you wouldn't be there for a, a European post-European sure. press conference. I yep. suppose so the main quote we can tie in the press and the injury update here in one is, is Ollie Watkins is that one people are maybe a little bit worried about. He's had a, had a bit of a knock in training. They decided to rest him, which is, is smart, ahead of a busy week. And if he's fit and available to, to play and start on Sunday and he scores the winner against Bournemouth, it was a, a wise decision, wasn't it? So what's your kind of gut reaction from what you've heard from Emery? Do you think Watkins will feature Sunday or, or will he still be rested till 
the Man City and Arsenal games, do you think? Yeah, I think he's probably got quite a lot to do on Saturday to prove that he's fit and raring to go. I mm. Right now, again, as of uh, half six on a Friday night, I would probably suggest he'd be on the bench. He seems, I say he seems well enough to be in the squad. I, I don't think it was a situation on Thursday where, you know, Watkins was... I don't know, so injured that he couldn't play. I think it was just, all right, let's give him the night off because of a small problem of, you know, whatever it may be. I'm not too sure whether it's a muscular injury, but Emery said that he felt something small in training on the Wednesday. And that's why I just left him out. Um, and yeah, at, at the moment it's 50-50. Again, I think he'll have to go some way to kind of prove his fitness, I suppose, heading into mm. Sunday, considering Man City and Arsenal. I think Emery would rather play Duran and then potentially bring in Watkins off the bench if needed rather yeah. than play Watkins and he's playing at you know 50% against Man City and Arsenal because these games are coming really you know thick and fast we play City on the Wednesday and then it's Saturday against Arsenal so there's very little rest at all it's what like two two days rest and then it's a game don't get me wrong but you know that kind of 20 minute spell between team news being announced to Emery saying to TNT about the injury I think everyone including myself which is say Dan was thinking oh no <laughs> even if it's <laughs> just for two weeks what's that how many games would that be I don't know four yeah, or five four games at least, yeah. <laughs> so that that's a long period of time the thing with no. Bournemouth is if he's 50-50 or you know he's, he's 70% fit or whatever because the the game that we play is so intense and he's got to be you know, if he's not playing to the the best of his ability and pressing from the front, you might as well not be there anyway. As much as he could, yeah. he could score a yeah. goal out of nothing. If he exacerbates a potential injury and then doesn't play at all against Man City and Arsenal, we've got much mm. less chance of getting anything from those games. Yeah. And then we could probably still, and obviously be respectful to Bournemouth, we could we've probably still got enough to beat them without Watkins. Now I think you nailed it. There, you've got. A risk playing him against um, Bournemouth, and then you're also probably going to be playing an Ollie Watkins that isn't fully fit. Whereas that's that's the kind of trade-off to playing him, and then against Man City, he's obviously going to be more fit than what he will be on Sunday. So I think it kind of makes sense not to start him again. This is just based off what we know now. If he wakes up tomorrow and, and he's feeling much better and his injury um, is okay, then maybe he will start. I'm I'm sure he wants to start him and. Um, yeah, but then again, I think he has no qualms with playing Duran up top mm. either. So I think it's the game against Bournemouth as well that Villa will have chances in. And we've said previously that while Watkins has got, I think it's what, 14 goal contributions in 13 games this season, Villa aren't reliant on him as much as that figure would suggest. We are free scoring around the team. So um, yeah, I wouldn't be going to Bournemouth, you know, thinking that, oh, we can't win this game and we can't score at least twice, even if Watkins wasn't playing. Um, I'm still confident. I think it's the other end. I think it's how do we keep Bournemouth out? Again, they're a team that will probably look to, um, or they will probably relish just playing a high line. Again, we do it very well. And it's not as simple as just playing the ball through. Obviously, we wouldn't do it. But that is a bit of a concern for me because um, they have very quick players. Solanke is in top form as well at the moment. So, mm. yeah, if we can keep a clean sheet, I think we win the game. If yes. we can see one goal, we might win the game as well. Um, again, even without Watkins, because yeah, I just think we have goals across the team and we are very confident. We're going to do the opposition view now, but not in the way that we normally do where we've got somebody on with us. We've not had the time to sort that this afternoon and we don't have a Bournemouth writer at reach um, to, to get them on. So we've got the opposition view in the sense that we've dug out some stats or you've dug out some stats uh, about Bournemouth this season. And we're just going to reel them off and, and see if there's anything, uh, any interesting talking points to come off the back of those. Bournemouth are in decent form, to be honest. I think they've won three out of the last four. The defeat was Manchester City. They beat Newcastle at Bournemouth as well. So... One that we're probably looking at as a, a bit, bit of a banana skin that, yes, we've got much more quality than they have, but you know it's one that you could possibly slip up on and then you've got Man City and Arsenal to come and if you're going into those on the back of a defeat at Bournemouth or something, the mood generally is going to be a little bit uh, a little bit negative that I do think mm-hmm. we're going to beat them. Um, so let's read off some of these stats then. Bournemouth have won four of their six Premier League meetings with Villa, losing the other two, only having a higher win rate against Huddersfield in the competition than against Villa, which is 75% versus 67%. They are a bogey team, aren't they, Bournemouth? We, we never seem to do well against them. Yeah, and I presume those wins were the first game that we played against them in the Premier League and then the last one. The one we got relegated, yeah. yeah. Bogey team, but to be honest, mate, I think most pe- most uh, sorry teams bogey teams against us in the last um, oh, yeah, you know, before Gerard and even during, uh, yeah, a team that you know 
the kind of classic tight pitch, small pitch. Um, it, it's definitely going to be a different game. It's what Villa are used to. But Emery has won his last two. He's only played Ari- Iriola. Andoni Iriola. He's only faced him twice, both in La Liga, and he beat uh, his Rio Vallecano side 2 0 and then 5 1 away. So if you're going into kind of tactics and stuff, I think he's got his number there. Um, mm. Probably jinxed, haven't I? But uh, yeah, a, a nice, um, uh, I don't know, a positive start, I suppose. It's certainly better than being on the other end of that. If they take it seriously, they win. But yeah, I, I'm still um, still got my questions about the away form, even though we've made like a joint best Premier League start after 13 games and stuff like that. And we beat Tottenham away. I just think there's, in almost all of the away games we've played this season, there's been a bit of context as to why we've either won. Usually it's because of something that goes in our favour. Um like the Tottenham game, kind of 11 injuries and Benson Core's injury almost changed the game in many ways. You still got to win them. Uh, Chelsea, red card, and then we win. I just want to see us go to somewhere, even, you know, Bournemouth, again, with all due respect, they're not the best team, but they beat Newcastle. And it'll be tough if Villa can go there and win the match 2-0. Fantastic. That is, you know, half of my uh, worries about away form. They kind of go after that. And, you know, I just want to mm. see us go somewhere and dominate and, and get a win. Another couple of stats very quickly before we move on. Bournemouth have won three of their last four Premier League games, losing the other, as I mentioned, having been winless in 13 before that, drawing three and losing 10. They have not won more consecutive games in the top flight since a run of four between May and August in 2018, while they last won three in a row in the same season in March 2016. Um, Including penalties, Bournemouth have scored the fewest won and conceded the most with 10 from set pieces in the Premier League this season. Is that something you think we can exploit? Austin with fear, a little cheeky yeah. set piece out of nowhere? Yeah, we've had a few of them, haven't we? Um, mm. Recently. Well, I mean, this season in general and definitely the work that McFeed does on the training ground, I don't think it is appreciated enough um, by fans. I think ever since he came in, it was kind of a thing of, oh, we don't need a set piece coach and you have pundits questioning it and stuff, but you don't even have to look at the data. You need to watch Aston Villa matches to understand that they create mm. a lot of chances from set pieces. Um, defensively, you know, I'm not a <laughs> set piece expert and Austin McPhee will know better than me. I'm sure that there's plenty of ways that Villa prevent the ball going in the back of the net as well, because it, it seems like a very different dynamic. It's hard to work out, you know, the strategies to defend uh, set pieces rather than you know you can clearly see that John McGinn is standing blatantly in an offside position <laughs> when Villa um, scored their goal against Legia so they're, they're more obvious to work out what's going on credit to him and Emery as well who um, works with uh, Austin yeah crucial goals as well in the last few games obviously the winner against Legia the equaliser against Tottenham yeah so um, yeah Emery said after the game against Tottenham actually that Villa want to dominate kind of every aspect of the game and set pieces are a massive part of that. So yeah, if Villa can get in decent situations, the quality of Douglas Louise putting the ball into the box for Torres, concert, maybe Carlos if he starts, players like that. Hopefully Ollie Watkins as well. Um they'll get chances. I know Lloyd Kelly is also missing the game for Bournemouth too and that's a big loss for them. Yeah. So again, that's another, um, no one wants to see a player get injured, but a bonus, I suppose, for Villa. Let's do predicted 11 for Villa then. You just mentioned maybe Ollie Watkins starting. How do we do this? Is it your predicted 11 or is it what you think Emery will do? I can never decide what we want to do. This, what do this is do? what this is what I think Emery will do. Well, Martinez in goal, the reason why he didn't play against Legia, yeah, I presume, was just uh, came back from international duty with a bit of an issue with an injury. Uh, I think if there was an actual injury there, there's something that would keep him out. He just wouldn't be in the squad. So, yeah, he was on the bench against Legia. Yeah. He'll play in goal. I think he'll probably go with a back three again. Well, I say back three. Obviously, Villa play with a back three, but three centre-backs. So, Carlos Concer and Torres. Luca Dean, Matty Cash, so that would be unchanged if I'm not mistaken. You don't for Tottenham. You don't go Moreno again. I'd play Alex Moreno if he was kind of fit as a fiddle and he'd played five games before now, but I just think coming back after that, you know, six months out, you've played 80 minutes, which is quite a long time, maybe just kind of, I don't know, ease his way into it. We've got a lot of games coming up and we don't, what we don't want to do is um, have a player who's only played once in six months and then kind of knacker him out mm, ahead so of Arsenal and Man City. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm happy with Luca Dean playing um, still, and I think he's played very well recently. Douglas yep. Louise in the middle of the pitch, of course. I think probably John McGinn moves back, considering yep. Kamara's yep. obviously out. Tielemans, I'd have thought, would play as well. And then DRB and probably John Duran, because I don't think at this stage Watkins will be fit to start. Another way you could do that is maybe play Jacob Ramsey instead of Tielemans. Um or play Jacob Ramsey instead of Diego Carlos and work it a different way. But I just think Emery will play a back three again and you can bring those players off the bench, your Bailey, Ramsey, ammunition off the bench for sure, especially if Watkins is on the bench. Yeah, Tielemans or Ramsey. I think there's quite a few ways that Villa can play it, but I think that's probably my uh, 
that would be my prediction. Let's get into predictions then to end the show. To recap for the Spurs game that we did last, like I say, we, we don't do the predictions for the European games. We only do it for Premier League. Uh, I said 3-1 to Villa. You said 2-1. So you got it spot on. Uh, three points to you, one point to me. That leaves us now with 15 for me versus 13 for you. You've certainly caught up over the last couple of weeks with a couple of um, correct scores or correct outcomes and a correct score against Spurs. So for Bournemouth, Tricky one, banana skin, whatever tag you want to throw at it. What are you going for? Bit of six nil. <laughs> My head is telling me a uh, draw, to be honest. But okay. I'll say two one Villa, which is obviously what I said for Spurs. But yeah, I again, I'm not convinced Villa can keep clean sheets at the moment. But mm. I don't care as long as we are scoring more than the opposition. I know I said earlier that I, I want to see like proper performance and stuff, and to kind of go away, keep a clean sheet, and dominate. But yeah, I, <laughs> I am as much as you, Dan. I just go to there place and win that's all I want really 2-1 yeah agree with absolutely everything you say I'm going to go slightly more conservative than I usually do which probably means we'll probably lose now I'm going to say 1-0 we are going to keep that clean sheet out of nowhere and that'll be a kind of beautiful a dogged, dogged away performance just go there get one goal get out of there three mm-hmm. points move on to Man City I think that's that's how I'm, I'll, I'll be fairly comfortable with that if that's how the way it played out I'm more than happy with that yeah, and this could be a very good weekend for Villa. Um, United yeah. play Newcastle, or Newcastle play Man United. Newcastle United play Man United. They have a thing <laughs> United, about United. United. <laughs> yeah, they have a thing about the whole United stuff, don't they, Newcastle fans? And City play Tottenham, so Villa, I think, could be five points uh, five points clear in fourth, which <laughs> would be mad, really. Yeah. Again, that's, it'd be nice buffer as well, because then Villa could lose to Man City, of course they could. And then it's a case of, oh, well, we're still two points in the top four you, you can then go into the Arsenal game you know it's it there's no like immediate pressure of oh but you know we're not yo-yoing all the time then yeah it'd be nice to just get this win uh and then you can go into those two games and kind of the pressure's off not the pressure's mm. off but you know you can go into those games and I must enjoy it I think that's the kind of the key thing because anyone can lose to Man City and Arsenal but yeah it'd be nice to also keep that uh winning run going at home but it's going to come to an end at some point but Hopefully not. Not, not next week, John. No, yeah. Week, definitely not. We'll talk about that later in the week. Uh, John, thanks for joining me for this episode of Inside Bodymore. A look back at Legia and a look ahead to Bournemouth. Let us know your score predictions for Sunday in the comments down below. Stay so subscribed to Carton Blue to keep up to date with all our latest content. We had a record month in November in terms of uh, views and whatnot. So um, thank you very much for supporting everything that we do. Plenty upcoming in December. Loads of games to be talking about. There's going to be podcasts pretty much every other day the way it's, as it stands at the moment. And we are trying our very best to secure more ex-player and, and manager interviews as well, but not easy to organise, as, as we've said before. We'll be back on Sunday for a post-match reaction. John, thank you very much. Thank you for watching. We'll see you Sunday.